hurricane that is still with us as a tropical storm called Juan. Anything that moves around like this can't be a man, has to be a woman. <laughs> but here it is, it came up, it just all of a sudden popped up in the Gulf. That was its strength. It didn't have to come a long ways because it had tremendous strength because of the heat in the Gulf at this time of year. That's the source of its strength and energy. And uh, then it started, uh, was off the uh, coast of Mexico, and then it uh, finally zigzagged its way north. And then when it thought we thought it might come our way, but instead it went to Louisiana. All hurricanes seem to have a natural attraction for Louisiana. <laughs> and and uh, everyone breathed a sigh of relief when it went into Lake Charles, the town of Lake Charles, because once it's in over land, it loses its strength. But this was a biggie. And remember that all hurricanes, of course, are um, function counterclockwise. And so over land, it loses its strength. But this was so big and so gigantic that it kept going back over that wa water, and the water of the Gulf is warm, and it would pick up strength. And finally, it was so strong from getting out to getting its strength out there on the water of the Gulf that it just popped right back into the ocean, into the Gulf. And then it took another look at us and started to slowly wobble west, at which point everyone was a little disturbed in Texas, especially Galveston, Houston, uh, Port Arthur, Beaumont, and so on. But then all of a sudden it did a strange thing. It, did a, it made a complete loop and went back toward the east. And then it selected as its next landfall Lafayette, Louisiana. And once it was that far inland, everyone was sure that that was the end of Juan. <laughs> but actually, that was only the beginning, because by this time, Juan was even bigger and getting a lot more strength from the water out here in the Gulf as it made its counterclockwise action. Then, uh, everyone thought, well, it's over now, no more problem. And if it didn't turn suddenly south and overnight go right straight down due south to Marsh Island, and the eye was over Marsh Island. Now, with the eye over Marsh Island and that tremendous uh, counterclockwise circulation, it picked up heat north of Marsh Island. It picked up heat south of Marsh Island from the water, the warm water of the Gulf. One day you'll hope that the Gulf will be like the Barent Sea, the, or, which is uh, in the Arctic area. In fact, uh, it's very close to certain areas like uh, Bear Island and so on. That's about the only island in the Barents Sea. So then we have, so then it gained this tremendous strength and just started to scoot across Louisiana, the coastline again. And it finally reached the mouth of the Mississippi. And I don't know whether there's, when the eye was over the mouth of the Mississippi, whether there was any heat there or not, but since that's right close to the Gulf, again, it picked up a lot of strength. And then it did a strange thing. It went right by Gulfport and went right by past Christian, and it even went right by past the Gula. And if it didn't go ashore again at Foley, Alabama, right across Mobile Bay, and there it was, on land again, and apparently moving northeast. But what happened? It's getting its strength. Every time that counterclockwise circulation is still getting its strength, and it's so big now that uh, the edge of it's all is in Chicago. That's what I... <laughs> and they have rain in Chicago. Now they're claiming that it's going to go northeast. By this time, I don't call this... They, they knock it down to a tropical storm over land because it loses velocity. But it keeps picking up its strength. And, of course, by now, instead, I don't call this Senor Juan. This is Don Juan. <laughs> He's been upgraded as a real troublemaker. And, of course, it could pop out again because it keeps gaining strength because when the circulation is as far up as Chicago, it's getting all of its strength from the hot water of the Gulf because it's just covering the whole Gulf. And there's one town you never hear of that's getting clobbered all the time because it's on the wet side, and that's Pensacola. And Pensacola wish they'd never heard of Juan. <laughs> and, of course, the flooding that will happen in Louisiana is well known to all of us. And the people of Louisiana like it so well, they don't care whether it floods or not, they're going to stay. 
Now, it, I got to thinking about Juan, because you see, Juan could get down the Gulf again and knock Florida for a loop. Could wind up in Miami, who knows? At this point, we don't know. All we know is that Juan is so big and has such an extensive circulation that uh, it, every time it comes over the Gulf, it's getting its strength. And every time it gets over land, it loses some. And I thought, you know, that's a good illustration of the way believers function, erratically. And say no one is perfect, of course. And uh, we get over, we get in the dungeon of the cosmic system, and we lose strength. And then we rebound, and we get back up there through gate one of the divine dinosphere, and we gain strength. And we lose strength, and eventually, just like a hurricane, if it gets over land and stays over land, it disappears. Just suddenly, it's a little rain shower, and it's gone and the sun is shining again, and we're waiting for the next one. And, of course, uh, that's exactly like the sin unto death. Eventually, uh, if believers live all their time in the dungeon of the cosmic system, they're gone. 